I've never said that word before. We were not raised to say that word. We've never heard it. Or maybe we heard it and we used to say it, but we're coming back to that word, hallelujah. You know why? Because that hallelujah, it's a praise to God. It's the highest form of praise to God. It don't matter where I'm at. It don't matter where I've been. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. But I say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a declaration. Let's all lift up our hands right now. We're going to pray. And I believe God has a message for you. Father, I just pray over every person right now in this room. Father, you know every single need. You know every detail of us, God. God, you know the, those that are here, God, that's tonight, God, this is, this, 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 them being in, in this room right now, you're saving them from something. Them being in this room right now, Father, it's a miracle that they're here right now, God. Someone's in this room, you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Don't leave. God got something for you. Father, I pray that you would meet our needs. You're our father. You're a good father. You love us so much. You love us so much. Show us your love, God. Heal our wounds right now. Build our faith right now as we hear the word of God. Unite us, Father. Help us to be, Father, a, a, a church, God, a people, God, that's so united that it's a testimony to the city, that it's a testimony to the world, God, that it shows and it proves to those out there in the world, God, that, that, that Jesus is real, that they know that, that Jesus ha it loves them through our love for each other. Unite us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Tell the person next to you, you're blessed. You are blessed. Man. I don't have that much time, but in the short amount of time that I have with you, I want to share something. I missed you guys. Man. Missed you guys, man. Haven't been up here in like six years. No, I'm just kidding. I miss you guys, man, and um, for those of you guys that don't know me, me and my beautiful, amazing wife, we're um, the pa one of the pastors here at the church, and uh, we're just so excited to be here with you guys, to do life with you. I mean, meeting you at the altar, meeting you in the, in the house of God, it's been such a blessing these last nine years of my life, and uh, man, can we give a, a, a hand clap for Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa? Man. They, they have done so much in our lives, in your life, and, and they're not slowing down, right? You see Pastor Marco and Pastor Lisa, they're not slowing down. They're I feel like they're barely getting started. They got a lot to give, and we have some amazing, amazing pastors. And um, I just want to also honor, if you're a leader, a P12 leader or just a leader in ministry, uh, can you stand up? I, I just want to acknowledge you. I mean, man, we wouldn't, this church would not be who or what it is without you leaders, man. Let's give a hand for all of our leaders, our pastors. Love you guys. Love you guys. You guys are doing an amazing, 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 amazing job. And the message that God gave me today was, or last night, he, he gave me a message right away, like just quick, boom. And he downloaded it in my spirit. And he, and he was talking about this, there's power in unity. 
There's power in unity. And so if you're writing down some notes or you're taking notes down, take that note down. This is the title, The Power, There's pow the power of Unity. The Power of Unity. You know, when you look around in the world right now, you see a lot of what? Disunity. You see a lot of division. Right? The, the world is looking for people who are what? United. They're looking for people who are united. What happens is when you are united, there's nothing that we cannot accomplish. There's nothing. Tell a person next to you, there's nothing that we can't do together for the kingdom of God. Limitless potential when we're together. These are focused on these three things right here. If you're going to stay united, if, you're gonna, if you are, are going to be a brother or a sister that is united with your brothers and your sisters, if you're going to display unity to this world that needs to see unity, that needs to see a group of people that love each other unconditionally, that forgive each other, here's some things that we got to focus on because what you focus on will drift you away from being united or what you focus on can actually bring you closer and becoming more united. What is the focus? The first focus is this. Focus on executing the Great Commission. Focus on executing the Great Commission. Do you know what this does? It gets you out of the equation. What this does in, in a situation, no matter what it can be, in church or in your family, but when you just focus on the Great Commission, I mean, it shuts everything else down around you and it reminds you, hey, you know what's important right now in this moment, right? What's important in this moment right now isn't that you get your point across or that you, you fight fire with fire. You're, what's important right now is that you got to remember that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ called to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Some of you guys may be wondering what is the Great Commission? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Those are, those are the words of Jesus. See, he's letting us know because we're, we're human. There's going to be some times that we disagree on things. There's going to be times where you might get your feelings hurt. Or I might get my feelings hurt, right? We're human. But Jesus was letting us know, hey, in this life, this is what the focus is. Don't get it twisted. Don't start get, get focusing on the American dream or whatnot. Focus on the Great Commission. When we we're focusing on this scripture right here, it, it helps you to be selfless. It's easy to be divided by people when you're selfish. See, because this, this verse right here is letting, letting, remember, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I don't belong to myself. I'm a soldier for Jesus. I'm a child of the Most High. I don't, I don't belong to me. So I don't lead me. I let the Holy Spirit, I let Jesus lead me. And this is what he's leading us to. This is how he leads us, the Great Commission. 1 Corinthians 3, 2 um, through 3, it says, I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger, and you still aren't ready. For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove that you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? This is one of those like straight up scriptures. It says, ouch. Speak to me, Lord. When you're in disunity with your brother and sister, all it is is it's proof that you're still immature. 
And that's okay to identify that you're still immature in that area. But not to stay like that. Some of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we've been walking in disunity for years because of what someone else did to us. And God said, hey, it's time for you to mature, baby. It's time for you to, to get some strength going. It's time for you to stop eating the, the little baby snacks. You know, my son Xander, he's one and a half years old right now. And he does not like food, like a meal. He don't like that type of stuff. So we're like, you know, we're finding a way to help him out. But you know what he likes? Snacks. He likes, he like, not hot Cheetos, but he likes Cheetos. He likes um, 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 Cheerios. He likes snacks. You put a, a meal in front of him, any meal that a kid would love, and he does this face like, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. And he knows sign language, so he does this. That means all done. He's like, uh, 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 all done, all done, all done. He starts patting. He's like, uh, give me my snack. I'm good. The time for us eating snacks and surviving off snacks is over. God wants to develop you to mature and to handle more pressure and more weight. Because I'll tell you this, to be a Christian today, it's not going to be any easier. It's not going to get where people are like, oh, they're just going to accept this or accept me because of this. No, 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 no. You're, it's getting to a place where people are going to say, hey, you're a Christian. Oh, you guys are judgmental. You guys are this. You guys, and they're going to come with some fire. And if you're not mature, some of you, you're going to give them a left and a right. We'll be praying for you. Or some of us, though, we, we, might, we might get to a place where we're like, man, I don't even know what to do. I'm not used to this level of pressure. I'm not, I'm not mature enough for this type of weight. But God's developing you to handle more. I mean, when I look at us as Christians in the world, I look at us as an army, a strong army. We're not, we might not be many, but we're strong. We might not be many, but we cast out demons. We might not be uh, many, but we walk in power. We ain't afraid of nothing. You're going to have a hard time putting fear into us, right? That's the type of warriors that God is developing these last days. Are you going to let him develop you to be a warrior in these last days? Are you going to say, no, God, I want to stay comfortable in where I'm at? So when we're in disunity, it's just proof and showing us that we're still immature, 1 Corinthians 1.10, it says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and in purpose. Where's the purpose? Remember, it's the Great Commission. We just read that. We need to be united in thought and in purpose. You know what that means? That the enemy is after your mind first. He's after, he's trying to give you thoughts of division, thoughts of disunity to affect what? Your purpose. And so when you get those thoughts of division, those thoughts of offense, oh, well, this brother in the church did this to me or this sister did this to me, they're human. Capture that thought right away. It's an assignment against the call on your life. It's not a small thing. You might think it's such a small thing. No, no, it's not a small thing. It might be a seed, but that thing's trying to become a palm tree in your life. Capture that thought. Oh, they're against me. They don't, they're, I think they're talking about me behind my back. Maybe they are. Just be, be just look at your, your, yourself in the mirror and just say, maybe they are. I'm okay with that. You're not going to survive as a Christian in this society if you are not okay with people talking about you. What will happen is you're going to conform to the ways of this world and you're going to start, like Pastor said oh, earlier, we, want, we have this, um, I want all these likes. I want people to like me. I want people to like me. Read Acts. Stephen's getting stoned. They didn't like him. And he, and he stood there taking it. 
he stood there as a martyr for the Lord. If someone comments something negative on us, we can't even be a martyr for, on social media. They hurt your feelings. Why? Because they unfollowed you? Man, I unfollowed a bunch of people one time, right? Like 200. You would be surprised, I'm probably not, how many people came to me. Why? Man, did you follow me? I don't think you did, but did you? They know I did. Did you? And it was an accident type of thing. I, I, this marketing thing, I, yeah, long story short, they just deleted a bunch of my friends. But people were like, they thought I, they thought I didn't want to be their friend in real life. Social media is not your real life. You got to get out of that box. You got you to be okay with this. If God told you tonight to just lay social media down and never touch it again, would you do it? I'm just saying because I think some of us, we, that's our, our, our number one source of entertainment. And it's like if, there's no, if social media is not around, if there's no social media, then what point is there to live? Like we get to that place. First thing we do when we wake up, we hit the, the, the apps. You're talking about someone in the church, but you're like packaging it to where, I'm not saying no names. But you want them to see it. He said, no division. Tell the person next to you, I love you. Tell the other person, hey, no division between us. I mean, do you understand how powerful that is? Do you understand how powerful those statements are right now in the spirit realm that we're just saying, hey, I love you. Hey, no division right here. We're one. We're one. We're together, bro. I'll tell a story real quick, and, and he's in here, so he'll probably start laughing. But so you know who it is. I'm just kidding. But I, as I've been mentoring some guys, I remember a time where I was mentoring this, this, this guy and he had some things to say about me. And one of my other guys that I was mentoring recorded him. That's a real one, right? No, I'm just kidding. So he records this conversation. He's like, man, man, no, nah, man, you know what? I don't, I, I don't care what Gabe thinks, man. I don't care. I don't care. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. He's just going and going. And then and the other guy's like, bro, you're off, bro. Like, do you hear yourself right now? Those are demons. Do you understand what you're saying? Like, what's your, and, and I mean, and he went off. He said all kinds of things. He was hurt. So I get that sent to me. <laughs> I'm laying down with Abriana. And I'm like, here are the first five seconds. Oh, I, I got to get up for this one. I got to go up to the, go to the bathroom real quick, Abrana. And I listened to it, and, and dude went off for like 30 minutes. It was like a sermon, a demonic sermon. And he was just boom, boom, boom. And I remember God said, just love him. Just love him. He's hurting. He's struggling with spirits that were passed on to him from generation to generation. Don't take this personal. Don't ruin the ministry that I gave you with him. So I, I, I reach out to him around like, it's like 11 o'clock. We end up meeting in person at like 1 a.m. And I like to handle stuff right away. If you know me, you know that's how I am. Now, we meet up in person at 1 in the morning. He doesn't know that I know what I know. Hey, Gabe, what's up, man? How you doing, boo? Dude, how you doing? We, we sit down like, you know, let's talk. How, how are you doing? What are you going through? Things like that. And he starts being transparent, which is good on his part. He starts saying where he's at. He starts, you know. And then we pray, man. God gives, gives him breakthrough and wisdom. And it's just powerful. And I, to, I, and I don't remember if it was during or after or what, but I pressed play on my phone. And this is him going off, like, man, like, man. And he's, uh, I'm sorry, man. I was off. I was off. <laughs> he says, I was off. I said, it's okay. You see, we misinterpret 
opportunities. And this is how we do it sometimes. You see something like that and you so easily, I'm cutting that person off. Nope, I'm done with them. Whatever the case may be. And you don't realize it's an opportunity for you to show a person that you love and that you're, that you're mentoring that you got some mercy to give out for them. No matter what they're dishing out to you. It's an opportunity when people are staring at you wrong. It's an opportunity when someone doesn't like you. It's an opportunity when they're talking about you behind your back. It's an opportunity to show Jesus Christ in the situation. It's an opportunity. Number two, focus on being humble. Tell the person next to you, humble up. Man, you can't go wrong walking around humble. Ephesians 4.2, it says, always be humble and gentle. When? Always. Be humble and gentle. We have to understand that we're dealing with people that have real problems. And you're one of them. How would you want someone to treat you with humility? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Dish it out then. Same thing, humility. You want people to treat you gentle when you're going through the hardest time of your life? Be gentle back. It says be patient with each other. Make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. So it comes from the right place. It comes from a place of love. This ain't religion. It's coming from a place of I love you so much. Man, I don't care what you're saying about me. I mean, I love you. I, I mean, you're, you're saying some crazy stuff, but bro, we're going to get through this together. I'll tell you this, that relationship with that brother is, is one of the strongest relationships I have in the church. Why? Because we've been through some things together. Some of us want some great brothers and sisters by our sides, but you're not willing to go through nothing with them. You're not willing to stick by their side when they're stabbing you in the back. You're not willing to say, hey, I'll go over there at 1 a.m. if I got to because I love you and I'm not about to let the devil have you. It's the power of unity. We don't have time to be prideful. We do not have time. I, I lived enough years of my life prideful. I don't have time. Do you understand that, that, that time is the most valuable thing that you have right now? Right now, what's in your pocket don't matter. The clothes that you wear don't matter. What The most valuable thing that you got right now, other than the Lord, of course, is time. We are in the end times. Don't waste time in the end times. We don't have a lot of time. You got to understand this, that life is very, very, very short. You know how I live my life? I live like my life like this could be my last preaching right here, right now. And the next time that you see me, it might be at my funeral. Oh, Gabe, you're crazy. I'm, I'm not struggling with no sissiness. No sissiness. I'm just saying, I don't, I'm not fearful for my life and all that stuff. What I'm saying is this, is that God has given me such an urgency of each day and such a wisdom and understanding that today you better love your wife and be, be solid with her because this might be the last time you see her. When you preach, don't, you better go all out because this might be the last time you preach. Just because I have visions and goals doesn't it not mean that I'm going to accomplish every one of them. A guy like, like me, I'm going to die with vision and goals. God's constantly pouring vision into my life. But you see, I don't live my life like I have all, all, all I don't, oh, I'm going to live to like 90. If I live like that, I'm going to make a lot of unwise decisions and think I have a lot of time to get back right with the Lord. I'm like, God, today could be my day and I'm going to make the best of today. Right? I'm telling you, just practice that. Don't do it in a weird way. You get all freaked out, scared. I'm calling everybody. I'm so sorry. I mean, that would probably be good, a good thing for some of us because that might bring someone to the Lord just hearing a phone call from you saying, I'm sorry. That might, you never know. But like I said, I, it's not that you're afraid. It's just that you're living with such a value for the people in your life. You live with such a value for the, the opportunities that the Lord presents to you.
You live with a value for your spouse. You live with such a value for your friends and your siblings and your parents. If you bring back that value, I mean, man, each day is going to be a powerful day. While we're wasting time being divided and allowing disunity to have our vision, people are dying and going to hell. Well, we're in, and, and, and I'm, I'm speaking to you in the church too, but if, the, if you're not in the church, hey, in our families, wherever it applies at work, wherever there's disunity, but in our church, I mean, we can't be in, this, in, this, in these four walls but fighting with each other, you know, getting all mad. And, and when there's people on the outside of these four walls that today is they're breathing their last breath, our family members, our neighbors, our friends, we got to focus. We got to refocus. Romans 12, 16, it says, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. That's, my, one of my, that's like now one of my favorite verses. That's, don't think you know it all. Remember, we're talking about being humble. If you're a know, to, know it all, I'm telling you right now, you're not humble. If you're like, how do I gauge if I'm, uh, uh, if you're a know-it-all, you're not humble. Right? We get humble tonight. We get humble. Now, <clears throat> number three. I did not think I was going to finish this message. Praise the Lord. Man, you're getting everything. Number three, focus on giving people the benefit of doubt. Remember, we're talking about focuses. Focus on giving people the benefit of doubt. They probably don't even know. No, because some of us are like, no, they knew. I, they planned this for the last like two months. This is all they've been planning. They've been, I seen the way they looked at me when I said hi and they smiled at me. They didn't wave their hand back. They know what they're doing. You know what? They're, they're just filled with demons. That's what it is. I mean, we get crazy. Give people the benefit of doubt. Have mercy on them. Have mercy on them. Give them the benefit of doubt. 1 Peter 3.8. Finally, all of you should be of one mind. Sympathize with each other. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tenderhearted and keep a humble attitude. Give them the benefit of doubt. Even if they did do what, they, what you thought they were doing, even if they had wrong motives, it's okay. You've had wrong motives probably all your life. Some of us, right? Like, think about it. Sometimes we, we, we want to shoot someone down because of what they're doing to you, but you don't want to remember what you've done to others or what you've done to the Lord or what you've done to yourself. You're mad because they don't respect you, but look how you're living. You're not respecting yourself. We're going to have so many, like, man, everyone's going to have best friends after this. Right? This is helping us, right? Is this helping anybody? You know, you know, when you forgive someone, you could actually love them unconditionally. But until you forgive them, what they did to you is still in the back of your mind. It's still on your conscience. So you watch yourself when you're with them and you have this guard up that you think is from God or you think it's just a wise thing to do, have this guard up against them. And I'm talking about if, if, if a brother or sister offended you in church and you have this guard up against them and you're like, I'm never going to let them back in. I'm, I'm keeping them on the outside. Oh, I love you too, my brother. How are you doing? Man, you're awesome. You're aw Good job. But you know what you're doing. You know that, that that's, that's superficial. You're not, you're, they'll, in your mind, some of us have said the, these words too. They'll never be in my life again. And we have to renounce some of those things. Some of us have said, I'll never trust them again. Some of us have said things like, I'll never trust a leader in the church again. I'll never trust a pastor again. Renounce those things. Which means to come in disagreement with that. 
through the power of the Holy Spirit, you could come in into disagreement with that thing. And it'll have to, it'll be forced to detach itself off of your life. And I'm not saying that we have not got, gotten really hurt by people. But you focusing on all those wounds, you know, and I know, it's not done you any good. How about we refocus? Try it for five days. Are you, who raise your hand if you're up for a challenge? If you're not up, I'm gonna pray for you. If your hand's not up, I'm gonna pray for you. No, I'm just kidding. Try it for five days. Let's try it out. Try focusing on these three things. If you need the notes, go to the app, and the notes are on the on the church app on the latest sermon notes. Try these five things, or these three things for the next five days. Let's refocus and watch health come back into your relationships. Let's all stand up and give God a hand if you guys got something tonight. You know, when we're united, when we're together, there's no city that we can't conquer for the Lord. When we're united, when we're together, there's no family too crazy for us to go after and to reach. Because we're united. You might trip out that some of your family members might come to the Lord through that very person that you were offended by. God's maturing us tonight. He's maturing us. Some of us, we, we even justified the offense. We justified whatever the thought was. Give it, give it, let it go, give it to God. And get what he has for you. It feels so good to not be divided, to not be offended by someone, to not be having something that they did to you on your conscience. It feels so good. You know what that is? It's freedom. And some of us were not experienced freedom from stuff that happened 10, 15 years back. And right now, what I wanna do is I wanna do a call. And this first call is for any of us that are saying, I want to forgive someone who has hurt me offended me, did me wrong in any way, whatever the case may be, I want to forgive them. I believe that this word was for me. I believe that God is going to set me free, that I'm going to feel and experience the freedom that God has for me. I'm tired of letting people's actions hold me down. I'm tired of letting what people did to me hinder me, and now I'm seeing it hinder my kids. Now I'm seeing it hinder my joy. I want my joy back. I want my peace back. If that's you, just run up here to the altars. If that's you. Come on, give them a hand as they're coming down. We're getting our freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not worth it. A house divided falls. That's not gonna be us. But we fight for unity. We fight, you're gonna, you're gonna have to run from me. If you wanna be divided by me, you're gonna have to run from me. If I find out you're in division or disunity with me, I'm gonna go after you. You know what's good? About when people are divided by you, when people offend you, and they talk all this mess about you or whatever the case may be, or they did you dirty or hurt your feelings, when you love them unconditionally, when they need breakthrough, when they need a touch from God, when they need to have a, 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 someone to counsel them, when they have nobody else, you can be there for them, help them get delivered out of a pure heart. I want to do another call. Maybe, you know, this is the most important 
out of every relationship, the most important relationship that you get united with is the relationship between you and your Father in heaven. You and your Father in heaven. You have a Father in heaven that, that can never even be compared to any fathers that have walked this earth. He's not like our, any fathers you've ever experienced or seen. He's a father that loves you unconditionally, who's seen the mistakes that you've made, who said, look, I love you anyways. Look, I'm gonna help you anyways. I'm making a way for, for you tonight here at this church. That's the father that you have. And he, he loved you so much that he made a way for him to get back into fellowship with you. He made a way for you and him to connect. He made a way for you to come and, and be united with him and his family. Right now, every single person here We've all committed sin. We've all committed sin. But Jesus Christ came to forgive you of the sin in your life, of the sin that you've committed your life to. Jesus Christ is more powerful than any chains that hold you tonight. Whatever you've given your life to, no matter how dark or demonic or what it was, whatever you think it, you can't get your life back, no, 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 your soul belongs to God. And on judgment day, you're gonna go before who? God. And he's gonna say one of two things. He's either gonna say, well done my good and faithful servant for all of those who have chosen to put their faith in Jesus Christ and he's gonna and we're gonna enter into heaven with him and we're gonna be in heaven forever and ever and ever with Jesus and with our father but then there's gonna be some that come before God and he's gonna say depart from me I never knew you it's not that he don't know you, but you and him don't know each other like that. And he's saying, I want to get to know you intimately. I want to connect with you. I want to talk to you on a daily. My love for you is unconditional. You can never earn it. It's a free gift. It's free. It's free, it's real, and it's available to you. It's real. Someone in here has been wondering, is this stuff real? Is God real? Is all this stuff real? I'm feeling a tug on me. Is it real? It's real. God's love for you is real. It's the realest thing you'll ever experience. Can God forgive me? Yes, he can forgive you. Don't believe the lies of demons saying that you can't be forgiven. What you've done is too dark. No, no, no. What? Darkness has, can't, can't do nothing to light. God wants to forgive you right now of your sins. God wants to, to, through his son Jesus, wants to give you eternal life. And if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, you're saying, I want to put my faith in Jesus. I'm going to count to three and I want you to lift up your hand boldly. You see, when I gave my life to Jesus, I was not trying to hide that. I was like, yo, right here, I, I want Jesus. I was bold. I was, I, I, I already did my, my dirt in the world. I already knew what the devil had for me. I knew that what I want is Jesus Christ. When I found out who he was, when I found out that God still loves me, when I found out that I, I don't have to be good enough, I didn't care who was watching. I mean, I started crying and I didn't understand why. Because the way I'm raised is you don't cry. But man, it felt so good to just finally cry. 
and I received the love of God. February 22nd, 2012 at our Sierra Way campus in the overflow tent, I received the love of the Father. I, I learned about who he is and I said, yes, of course I want you. Why would I not want you? This is the boy that was in my life, my whole, in, in my life the whole time I've been living. I just didn't know what it was. And I'm letting you know right now, you're held accountable because now you know what it is. I'm letting you know right now, the void in your life is Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus tonight. Give your whole life to him. Please give your life to Jesus. You don't know what's waiting for you when you leave today. You don't know what's happening tomorrow. You don't know any of these things. Tomorrow is not promised. Stop believing the lie that tomorrow is promised. I want you to receive Jesus. I want you to experience what I've experienced and see how real it is. And if you're saying that's you, I'm gonna count to three and just lift up your hands and, and, and boldly let me know who you are. One, two, three. If you're saying I want Jesus, raise your hand, raise your hand. Amen, 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 amen. Proud of you, man. Amen, amen. Look at they're giving their lives to Jesus. Come on, church. If you raise your hand, I want you to come down to the front. R race down here, run up here, come on. Come down to the front, come down to the front. We have a team that's gonna pray for you right now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. You're gonna get breakthrough. There's a love of God. It's a love of Jesus freely given to you. Come on. Yes! Thank you, Father. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I choose tonight to give you my life. I make you Lord over my life. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins, and I choose to forgive everybody who has hurt me. I forgive everybody who has done me wrong. I let it go right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I pray, amen, amen.